Welcome to Automation's official design competition. In this video you are joining us for the finals of Category V, the near future hypercar concepts. Your hosts Chris and Rob are joined by today's very special guest and celebrity judge Klaus Sisiora. Klaus is the global head of design for the entire Volkswagen Group and as such has had a major role in the design of virtually every car from the Volkswagen umbrella on sale today. Somehow he also finds the time to host both fun and informative channels on TikTok, Instagram and on YouTube. All links below, check them out. For those of you who would like to see a more in-depth analysis of the finalist designs as well as an interview with Klaus sharing some of his vast design and industry knowledge, join us for our roundtable discussion in the next video. But for now, 12 cars out of the 43 entries have made it through the pre-selection process and into these finals. Let's get into it. Well, this is unexpected. Straying from the stereotypical hypercar look, this design is a Hyper GT that exudes confidence. Modest and supremely fast looking. And I love it. It is not something that is giving you a shock or something totally new or they would say, wow, wow awesome. Yeah? Uh, it has a coherent way of performing detailing all, all across the car. This is a very strong retro modern kind of design. It has some generally nice features and the shape is generally pleasing, but the front headlights and the wing just really don't do it for me. And the color is really unusual. I can't quite put my finger on what it's supposed to be. To me, it has looks a bit like uh, out of uh, adventurous uh, fantasy movie from 20 30 years ago the uh, uh, aerodynamic elements all around are greatly done yeah. This is a really cool futuristic design for an all-electric sports car focusing on efficiency. It is like blending a supercar and a UFO. Very little wrong with this build apart from its targeted error. Seems a little too far in the future. This thing is adventurous and special and uh, it's it looks totally different uh, and is featuring stuff that haven't been seen on 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 cars uh, in, in in this type of combination. But in total, it's not a very beautiful or elegant uh, piece of design. Yeah?
On the surface, this entry seems really quite nice. It has a lot of pleasing shapes in and around it, and the vehicle has a nice form to it. However, when you start looking at the details, there's way, way too many colors and way too many other little details that are just added on, it feels like, for the sake of being added on. It gives it a very cluttered and very disorganized feeling. A livery approach, uh, very uh, racing oriented, uh, air inlets and outlets uh, where, where you uh, w would expect them to be. The colleague tried to, to bring aerodynamics uh, in, into the game. That is something where, where I, I would say it's rather a track toy. This is a very minimalist design, maybe a little bit too minimalist in the front. And that is stands in stark contrast with what's going on beneath the, the carbon fiber belt line. There's just too much and too much heavy stuff there. I really like the oversized wheels. It gives us a very strong presence, even if it might not be the most practical on the road. The upper uh, part of the design uh, we have uh, kept simple and easy where I had my issues uh, literally the lower part of, of, of the car especially in the front you have the feeling that uh, you know, it's like an empty shell yeah An ultra-high-end roadster for two crazies willing to take a seat? The curves on this one are a masterclass in flowing design. Exceptional craftsmanship and just the right amount of detail where it matters. That's an awesome piece of work. Uh, very consistent, uh, very nicely uh, designed. Uh, the surfacing is uh, is great. Uh, uh, the attention to details is is uh, also very nicely performed. This is a very conventional and very recognizable hypercar. The shape is right and the proportions are very good and I like the choice of materials throughout the vehicle. Unfortunately, I really don't like the double element rear wing. It just feels a little bit tacked on.
very interesting uh, new elements, uh, some slight flaws, yeah, uh, especially the side view is, is not very elegant yeah, with this huge black hole there. It looks super powerful and also a fresh take. Track toy number two. More futuristic and minimalistic? It does look pure, but also it doesn't grab me. The massive scoop is more jet fighter than car and goes against the otherwise more subtle design features. Yeah, may may uh, say okay. I've seen something like this here and something there, and uh, but it's not fitting together into uh, one new uh, type of thing that is is, is blowing you away. Uh, it looks also a little hefty and uh, and heavy. This is a very aggressive and very blocky supercar, maybe a little bit too much of both of those. The front is kind of unremarkable, but unusually for a car like this, it gets better and better the further you go back, and the straight on rear view is absolutely wonderful. I really quite like that part. It's just too bad it isn't very consistent with the rest of the car. There, there are some elements uh, that are uh, rather unique but disturbing. Yeah, it's kind of a mixture of uh, uh, Formula One elements uh, with uh, uh, cars that, that are seen in 24-hour uh, racing. This design looks strong and compact with its clean sides, but the heavy-handed design on the rear that crunches all its features and details together into a small area is way less appealing. I do like how modest the aerodynamics package on this one is though. It suits the style. Uh, front, a three-quarter front and side is better than the rear. Yeah? Uh, the, the roof part is, uh, yeah, the upper part in the rear view is still okay-ish, yeah? but then it, it 
breaks loose yeah it's uh it's, it's just too much Small cars again have to work very hard to have the outsized presence that a hypercar demands, and this car unfortunately goes way, way too far in that brief. From the over the top styling to the strange treatment of the rear and the absolutely horrifying color, this just does not work for me. The body looks uh relatively well balanced uh, the 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 front has a unique light light uh, signature a little inspired by by uh, lamborghini yeah uh, so but uh, all fine yeah and 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 then it gets cartoony and ca ca cartoony means you you just oversize elements you you uh, Put uh, a rocket on the back of uh, of a, uh, a wolf, yeah, and and uh, shoot shoot him to the moon, yeah. So it's overdone. This looks really fast and is well put together. The beautiful lines are hampered by all of what is going on in terms of the shape seen from the rear. I do love this super creative taillight design, even though it's really weird. Again, uh, the 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 thing looks pretty hypercar-ish, yeah, uh, supercar-ish, uh, and uh, is 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 of course uh, a collection of of uh, elements, but uh, not not put together in a in a way where, where I would say, okay, that's an awesome piece of of design, yeah. And there we have it. Big congratulations goes to Oreology for the winning design, to Prime for second and to ZP for third place. For more in-depth analysis of today's finalists, as well as an interview with our special guest, join us for our roundtable discussion in the next video. Also, subscribe to the channel and check out the competition playlist to not miss any of the fantastic and questionable designs that we showcase. Let us know what you thought of the featured designs in the comments below and visit the Automation Game Instagram channel where you can vote for your favorite finalist in our story.